It was six years ago. We were all in the kitchen one morning. Mum was cooking sausages for breakfast and Dad just collapsed. Brain hemorrhage. He nearly died. It was really scary. And now, every time I smell sausages, all I can think about is that. Brains are weird. His health is still fragile. Like, he has to go for regular checkups. And when the whole coronavirus stuff started happening, this letter comes saying that he has to stay inside for 12 weeks because he's extremely vulnerable. He moaned about that, which I get to be honest. My dad is the strongest person on earth, but we took it seriously. He starts doing jigsaw puzzles with birds and nature and stuff on them, <laughs> which is pretty funny because I've literally never seen him do anything like that in all my 21 years on this planet, but whatever. My older brothers drop shopping round for us sometimes and me and mum stay inside as much as we can. It's a bit long to be honest, but we have to protect dad. But he gets ill anyway. It doesn't seem that bad at first. He lays in bed a lot and mum keeps leaving his favourite chicken pepper soup outside the door, even though he doesn't want to eat. But I'm watching him one morning make a cup of tea and he's so out of breath. Like... It's seriously exhausting for him to just pick up a teaspoon. By the end of that day, he can barely breathe, so we call 999. Doctors help us see Dad in hospital through video calls. It's proper weird and horrible. Family from Nigeria keep calling all the time to find out what's happening, which stresses Mum out. They're being well dramatic, acting like he's already dead or something. I know mum doesn't sleep the whole time that he's in there. But after 10 days, he gets sent home. He's still weak and that, obviously, but he's back with us. Mum keeps wishing for some miracle cure, which obviously there isn't one. And dad doesn't say much about what it was like on the ward, standard for him. But he does tell us that doctors asked if he'd be a part of a clinical trial called recovery. Apparently, they take medicines that are already used for other illnesses and test them to see if they can help COVID patients. Dad said no straight away. I can't lie. I felt kind of upset about that. It was his choice, obviously, but we pretty much have the NHS to thank for Dad being alive. Twice now. I asked him why. And he says something which I swear I never thought I'd hear come out of his mouth. I was scared. All Dad knows of clinical trials is something that happened back home in the 90s. American doctors tested medicines on kids during a meningitis epidemic. But what they were using wasn't properly explained to their parents. Some of the kids died or developed disabilities. And apparently there's been lots of stuff like that to happen across Africa over the years, using us as guinea pigs. And like, what if the side effects were worse on dad than on a white person? Or what if the medicine hadn't ever even been tested on African bodies before? His fear makes sense. Look, I don't have to think about this stuff as much as him. Mum definitely doesn't, obviously. I guess it's like his whole life he's been treated different to white people in every bit of it, so why would this be any different? But I think it would be different. Over here now, in 2020, with the NHS and everything. A few weeks later, Dad gets a text inviting him to donate blood plasma to help with the national effort against the virus. <laughs> Mum gets to his soft side. She's all like, imagine, you could help another dad suffer less. Get back to his family quicker. Like, honestly, my dad would give you his last fiver, even if he had nothing left for himself. He wants to do something. He's rubbish with tech, though. So I sit down with him at the laptop and we fill in the form saying that he wants to get involved, but only when he's properly better, though. He's happy because it only takes 45 minutes and my dad is very impatient. Mum offers to go with him, but he's all, no, no, it's fine, I will go alone. Then later on, he knocks on my door 
or secretively, asking if I'd go with him. I say I will. Of course I will, 